Hello, wherever you're calling from, from the rest of the world. Um, welcome to the MPWB webinar entitled COVID-19 Related Issues, a Medical Physics Perspective from Italy. My name is Parminder Basran. I'm the Director of Communications for Medical Physics for World Benefit. Medical Physics for World Benefit is a nonprofit organization whose vision is a world with access to effective and safe application of physics and technology in medicine. MPWB's mission is to support activities which will yield effective and safe use of physics and technologies in medicine through advising, training, demonstrating, and or participating in medical physics related activities, especially in low to middle income countries. One of our objectives is to work with a spirit of collaboration by working with our colleagues, partner agencies, and national and international organizations to collectively improve patient care. Over the last several months, the COVID pandemic has dramatically changed and disrupted our personal and professional lives. China, South Korea, Japan, and other Asian countries were the first to respond to the pandemic, closely followed by Europe and now North America. The effects of the pandemic have been devastating with thousands of lives lost and hundreds of thousands, upwards of millions of people requiring medical attention. So in the spirit of collaboration and sharing of information, MPWB wanted to provide a way for our global community of medical physicists to learn from each other as a result of this pandemic. We're fortunate to be able to provide an opportunity to share and learn from each other by offering this webinar featuring the medical physicists from Italy, from Italy and Milan. If you, if you remember, Italy was one of the epicenters of the European pandemic. The agenda for our 50 minute webinar is as follows. After introducing our speaker, Dr. Antonella Del Vecchio, who is a medical physicist from Milan, she will provide a brief presentation describing her clinical environment, sharing her initial experience and where they are now. This will take about 10 to 15 minutes. After her presentation, we'll have a question and answer session where we'll uh, ask uh, pose questions that were provided in advance uh, to Dr. Anton uh, Antonella Del Vecchio. This will take about another 15 minutes or so. After these questions are asked, we'll ask questions posed during the presentation for about 10 minutes. And so I'll go through the questions and distill them and ask them for, uh, to the speaker. In the last five minutes or so, we'll be devoted to some final words uh, from the speaker and some closing remarks and a note of thanks. So please note that this webinar is being recorded. And so we hope to be able to share the video with a link on our website. Also note that there will be a brief uh, questionnaire provided at the end of the presentation, and we're really hopeful that you are able to um, complete that survey for us. It's my privilege to introduce our presenter and speaker for the webinar, Dr. Antonella Del Vecchio. She's a medical physicist from the Department of Medical Physics at the San Rafael Institute in Milan, Italy. As I mentioned earlier, Northern Italy is one of the epicenters of the European pandemic outbreak. And thus, Dr. Del Vecchio and her colleagues are one of the first centers in Europe to feel the impact of this pandemic. This puts the center, San Rafael Institute, in a unique position to be able to share experience and hopefully provide some information for those medical physicists who have not felt the burden of the pandemic in their communities. Dr. Del Vecchio is a medical imaging expert, so we're also very extremely excited over the fact that she's able to share knowledge of the impact of COVID in both radiation oncology physics and medical imaging physics. So what I'm going to do now is um, provide the presentation for uh, that Dr. Antonella Del Vecchio has presented. So I'm going to just switch my uh, computer screen and I will be presenting the slides and she will take uh, audio control and I will uh, move the slides, advance the slides for her. Dr. Delvecchio, hello, can you hear me? Antonella, can you hear me? Seem to be having some connection issues, so just uh, bear with us, please. Antonella, are you there? Her audio is connected. 
Sorry about the technical glitches, everyone. Hopefully we can get this, uh, get, get the audio connection back uh, with Antonella shortly. Antonella, are you there? Farhana, are you able to um, see if she has connection? She's green for her audio, so it okay. still shows that she's there. All right. And I chatted her and emailed. Okay. We'll give it another uh, minute or two, and then um, if we can't get her online, then I guess the best we can do is, is I can um, provide the slides for her and then hopefully she can maintain connection and, and chime in. Hello? Hello. Hello? Can you listen to me now? Yes, no? we can. Okay. Yes, can. Okay. Right, well, thank <laughs> Thanks for that. Okay. So I have, okay. have a presentation <laughs> ready and, um, and so uh, just tell me what slide when you'd like to advance the slides. So okay. We'll Okay, uh, so uh, I will drive uh, the slides by myself, or you will do it for me. I, I did. I will one. do it for you. Okay, I can do okay. it. Okay, so my name is Antonella Del Vecchio. As you know, uh, I'm the chief of the healthy physics department in Sarafelle Hospital in uh, in Milan. And uh, first of all, I want to thank you uh, because you are sharing with me. Um, our our experience in this very difficult moment i i believe not only in italy but all over the world at the next please okay i i said uh, uh, health physics department because in italy uh, the radiation protection experts in big hospitals like mine are also the mpe and so in the physics, uh, in the health physics department, so we take care of patients, the workers, and also working places. Okay, the next please. Okay, uh, in our physics team, um, our physics team is composed by 16 physicists, uh, for, for, for our researchers and to our dedicated uh, to nuclear medicine. I made the mistake, not, not five, but six residents, seven technicians and four secretaries. Next, please. And uh, we take care of radiation protection of San Rafael Hospital. And you can see uh, here is a very big hospital and uh, also for other 11 smaller hospitals and uh, diagnostic departments between uh, uh, Milan, Milano and Bergamo. And you know, you might know, I think that uh, um, Milano and Bergamo are uh, both in Lombardia uh, and are the cities more, most affected by the coronavirus infection. Uh, there have been a lot, really a lot of infected people and a lot of death, especially in Bergamo. I think that the percentage of death is the highest in Italy. Uh, next, please. Okay. Around uh, February 2022, um, we have had our first cases, but uh, we believed that uh, we could keep on working just uh, using a few tricks 
few tricks uh, uh, such as uh, gloves and masks uh, and uh, not everywhere but only in particular critical situations like in the emergency department uh, because uh, nobody had understood the real potential of the virus and also the uh, uh, WHO before um, 11th of March uh, said that uh, we uh, were not facing a terrible pandemic, but only an epidemic, little more than a normal flu that every year causes uh, many old and weak people's death. But, uh, however, Already at the beginning of March, uh, San Rafael has become one of the major coronavirus treatment centers in Lombardia, and the situation was becoming more and more critical every day. Therefore, we decided to reduce the number of workers in the department, uh, leaving residents and researchers uh, at home. And we reduce also of 50% the number of secretaries present every day in the hospital. Could you change the slide, please? Now, um, looking at every activity of the, the medical physics department. We can start with the radiotherapy that I think is the most important for a lot of people, for a lot of reasons, is the, the most important activity. Uh, the radiotherapy department is inside the hospital and the planning room is inside the department. And we treat both in and out patients. Um, we uh, don't have, we didn't see uh, significant variation in the number of treatments, uh, even if uh, three radiation oncologists moved uh, from radiotherapy department to the COVID units. I think that uh, the, the reason is that we have a, a long waiting list uh, and the patients have um, malignant pathologies and they come, come in Milan from everywhere in Italy using a special government permission. So uh, in, uh, in our department, uh, there are three tomotherapy units uh, and here, um, the, the work, decreased about 10% because the, the radiation oncologists, uh, when possible, prefer to move the patients from tomotherapy to cyber knife in order to decrease the number of sessions and so the number of uh, uh, the patients inside the department. And the plans are made in the planning room inside the department. Uh, then we have a, a very rapid arc unit. We didn't see any decrease in the number of treatments, but in this case, we can do, we can prepare the plans from home. Uh, can you move to the next, please? Thank you. Um, using three hospitals laptop and the special user's profile, uh, we activated the remote planning uh, for rapid arc and cyber knife. It was not possible for tomotherapy. We can see from home everything we need to do the plans, uh, the images of the patients, uh, all the clinical uh, information and so on from hospitals, box and database. So every day, Two physicists work from the, uh, the planning uh, room in the hospital and three from home. The physicists go directly to the planning room without passing through the medical physics department. And it is um, mandatory the use of the gloves, the mask, and the, the uniform. Absolutely no private clothes. Um, 
this is uh, the reason is uh, also that uh, the next please um, okay it is impossible to know if an asymptomatic patient is positive or not because uh, um, if uh, a patient is asymptomatic and don't live in uh, a patient doesn't live i'm sorry in a red zone it is not planned any swap so in radiation therapy department everyone who is in contact with the patients work if uh, as if they were if a patient is positive, if we know that he, have, uh, he has a, a positive swap, uh, the treatment is uh, the last treatment of the day. After the session, the treatment room is uh, cleaned this is, this, this in, with the deep disinfection. And the patient after is the day after, and the gap is about 12 hours. So in radiotherapy, we can say that except for the work from home, the workflow is always the same. And also the QA are regularly done. The next, please. Okay, uh, and uh, the QA are regularly done also in radiosurgery. We have a gamma knife and a cyber knife. Uh, in gamma knife, this situation is not so good because uh, uh, we move from uh, uh, three patient a day, five days a week, to one or also zero patient today. This is because a lot of patients come from outside the Lombardia and the patients in gamma knife uh, usually have benign tumor. So they prefer to wait the end of uh, the epidemic uh, before be treated. Now we treat uh, some uh, meds, few meds, uh, some uh, trigeminal neuralgia and uh, benign humor only from Lombardia, but very, very few cases. Uh, we don't perform any fractionated treatment. We don't use the mask and uh, we don't treat known or suspect. COVID patients. The cyber knife is completely different. I said before that the work increased more than 10% and uh, it is possible uh, to plan from home and uh, we have had just uh, one patient uh, suspect COVID, but usually the, the COVID patients are not treated in cyber knife. Okay, the next please. Diagnostic. Um, we usually uh, follow 18 MRI scan, seven in San Rafaele and 11 outside, and 214 machines, 76 in San Rafaele and the other outside. We um, now we choose that to not perform any routine QA, but only emergency and uh, acceptance tests. The next, please. The next. Can you listen to me? Next slide. Okay, but I cannot see. I listen to you, but I cannot see the slide. Okay, one second. Okay. Um, the septum test, uh, because um, we uh, bought a lot of new machines uh, for COVID intensive care units, 
mobile X-ray systems for monitoring the lung potential ventilation defects, uh, C-arms for emergency uh, surgery rooms, and uh, CT scans to better check the uh, pneumonia. We uh, did the septum test only before bringing the device into the ITC units and no routine check. Uh, we don't want uh, our physicists and technicians to be exposed to the coronavirus infection risk. Um, can you change the slide, please? Okay, also because uh, the number of available technicians is decreasing. We have uh, seven technicians usually, but now one uh, is working in these new uh, tent structures. Um, we built two uh, tent structures for ICU on the university football fields. One technician is working on there. And uh, um, I think uh, in the next future, another one uh, will go there to work with the uh, COVID patients. And also um, the chief of our technician is now working for the hospitals board to coordinate and organize the work of the technicians in the IC units um to protect them and uh, to choose the safest the ppe um the, the safest the working flow for all the technicians involved because we have also a lot of positive uh, operators in the hospital um i didn't prescribe any kind of uh, lead apron uh, in the ic unit for uh, for the use of uh, of uh, X-ray machines, because the operators need to use special uniforms to enter in a COVID unit. They put it uh, at the beginning of working time, and they usually get it out at the end of the working time. So it is impossible, in my opinion, to wear the lead apron uh, for a so long time. We just recommend it to maintain the safety distance. Okay, next, please. Thank you. Uh, in, the next, in the near future, we want to uh, organize a routine QA. Um, for example, where the department are closed, such as in some cardiology department, in MRI units, because uh, um, we never use the MRI scan for uh, COVID patients, but not, of course, in Bergamo. Next, please. Nuclear medicine. Uh, now only three CT PET are working and only in the morning. And uh, we uh, did uh, less than 20 patients a day. Um, even if the therapies, of course, are guaranteed. In nuclear medicine, there are two physicists, and every week one works in a hospital, in the hospital, and the other one from home. They never perform any monthly or yearly QA, only daily QA and the emergency check. Next, please. Uh, in our nuclear medicine department, there are also um, one uh, uh, MR PET, PET a CT SPECT, uh, two conventional uh, gamma cameras, a cyclotron, two uh, radiochemical labs, and we usually uh, we usually do uh, more than 60 uh, exams a day. Now only, only 20 and uh, all these activities are closed. Next, please. Uh, we have also the dosimetry service inside the department. 
and um, at the beginning of March, uh, we delivered regularly um, our dosimeters uh, everywhere. But uh, uh, only the hospitals in Milan send us back. Uh, they used the dosimeters, the, the dosimeters that they used in February. Uh, Bergamo was already a red zone. It, and, uh, it was locked down by the authorities, so they didn't send us back the dosimeters. But at the same time, uh, we understood that the situation was becoming worse and worse. And so uh, we decided to close the door of the department and exchange, uh, exchange of the dosimeters were organized, leaving them on a table outside the door. And um, every evening, our technicians collected the boxes. In April, we uh, decided to totally suspend the service, uh, but we want to start again in May. And the next, please. Okay, uh, here you can see a scheme, and sorry, it is in, in Italian, but I can translate for you. And um, here you can see that. Uh, for example, uh, for the copper, um, it is necessary to wait uh, two hours uh, uh, because they were um, to um, decrease uh, the virus potential of about 50% and uh, more than four hours uh, to uh, totally um, decrease the, the, the potential of the virus. He, uh, rame is copper, then paper, uh, steel, and plastic. And um, we want to take uh, this scheme uh, into consideration. And uh, so we decided to store the came back dosimeters in an isolated room for a week. Uh, allowing the technicians uh, before allowing the technicians to process them. Next, please. Okay, uh, for uh, the laser and ultrasound, so we prefer to stop the activity in order to, in order to limit the movements between different departments and uh, and a hospital. Uh, now, uh, before closing, I want. Uh, to share with you the Robert proposal. Maybe Robert uh, uh, want to, to speak uh, about uh, the radiomics. Uh, I don't know. Oh, I can speak about the radiomics. The radiomics. Um, because uh, we, we are organizing a study um, on the on the CT scans uh, images for uh, pneumonia only for uh, coronavirus uh, infected patients uh, because you know that uh, the images are completely different uh, because uh, the the situation of the tissues is completely different mm, we have uh, more than uh, 200 uh, uh, exams uh, collected uh, in only two or three weeks. Uh, and so we are trying to um, we are trying to, to define some parameters uh, um, to try to understand uh, if radiomics uh, could give us uh, some information about uh, the, the future of the patient, uh, about uh, how the, the pathology will uh, will uh, decrease, will decrease uh, in the future. And uh, we are trying to understand if there are some parameters uh, uh, to predict uh, if the patient uh, will go well or will die and how long will be the hospitalization of the patient himself. So um, I think he, if you are interested in, uh, in this activity, you can write uh, to Robert uh, and 
to um, our physicist uh, who is working on it, uh, the email address is uh, fiorino.claudio at um, hsr.it and uh, I think that we can work together and we can share our images uh, and uh, our uh, results to try to find uh, some answer to the radiologist's uh, questions. Next, please. Okay, this is a flag. <laughs> uh, the, um, the Italian children prepare them and you can see them uh, outside the, the hospitals, uh, the, the schools uh, and uh, the balconies. And uh, Andra Tutto Bene means everything uh, will be fine and uh, I hope for everyone in the world. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for that outstanding presentation. Um, that was incredibly helpful and there was just so much information in there and we're really, really pleased that you're able to share that um, with us. Um, for those uh, that were uh, listening in about the, uh, the, the, the study about radiomics, what I'll do is I'll try to capture some of that information and provide contact information for following up on that um, through our MPWB accounts. So for those mm. that, so I, I can, I will try to, I can, I can help um, um, provide a means for, for people to connect with. Uh, yes. With you I, okay. That. I, I can write for you the email address uh, of Robert and, uh, and Claudio. And mm. uh, I think uh, or this week or the next week, they will uh, meet by Skype uh, to, to try to organize the group. To so, try to organize the work. All right, so we'll we'll uh, we'll connect offline and, and we'll get that sorted out and we can we can share that information. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so again, thank you for this. Um, the next part of our, our our session or webinar today is to go through some of the questions that were submitted in advance. So we'll have about fifteen minutes to uh, to ask a few questions, and um, I, I'm looking at the the number of questions that our audience has submitted, and there's just an incredible number. So it's just Brilliant! Oh, <laughs> uh, so this is uh, this is great. But let's let's fire through some of the questions that we received in advance, uh, yeah. including our different social media channels. So here's mm -hmm. our first question: um, What has been your biggest operational challenge since the beginning of the pandemic? Oh, uh, since the beginning is difficult to say because at the beginning we didn't understood <laughs> we didn't understand the, the situation. Um, for sure, the um, the work from home. Right. The work from home, yes. And uh, and sorry. Was it was it um, more sort of technical issues about um, being able to set up the the access to the the, the software from home and, and those kinds of logistical concerns? Uh, yes, the um, the industries helped us to to do it, and uh, you know it was not possible for tomotherapy, but they are working on it. So right. I think that uh, all the hospitals uh, um, can ask uh, tomotherapy to to help the physicists to stay at home. Um, also, because uh, uh, in in, uh, in our hospital, uh, the, the planning room is inside the radiotherapy. Uh, one of the CT scan and radiotherapy is now used uh, for COVID patients. And so right. I, I prefer <laughs> if we can stay at home. Um, I think that uh, first of all, this one, and uh, the second uh, is. Uh, is that uh, we cannot check uh, the, um, the X-ray systems outside the hospital. Mm. And uh, I, I think that uh, when uh, the, um, the infection will be finished, I, I hope as soon as possible, we will have really a lot of work everywhere. Yeah, um, I... We, uh, don't work together anymore 
and uh, this is sad because we are used uh, to work all together <laughs> and um, nothing uh, the university the university uh, the, our work for university changed a lot because you know the university are closed and so i um, i don't like to um, to do my lesson without uh, see the, um, the students, uh, without mm -hmm. listening the, the students' questions, uh, it's, it's not a good way um, to do the university lessons. Yeah, this has been a very difficult time for a yes, lot of Yes, yes, it's but difficult I... that, uh, also for the students. Also yes. for the students, Absolutely. and then in the second part of the year, we usually have uh, the thesis for residents uh, for the residency, um, the final exam, and right. we don't have uh, the possibility to collect the data. So I mm -hmm. don't know <laughs> uh, how the thesis will be. Okay. Well, I think there's a question coming up about the residency programs. But let's let's go through another question here. Um, here's a question that was submitted by email and through our Twitter accounts. And it has to deal with the personal protective equipment and the access that your, um, that your center had. So um, could you provide some information about how you use the personal protective equipment in your, in your patient consults? Or, or, or have, you, have you had to significantly reduce the number of times that you visit patients? Um, can you make some comments about um, per, uh, personal protective equipment and patient consults? Um, okay, um, patients, uh, I'm sorry, patients uh, uh, have only the mask, right. only surgical uh, masks. Um, because one of the big problems we had, especially at the beginning, uh, uh, was uh, the number of the masks. Now we use uh, uh, masks for patients, but only surgical masks. And uh, for the um, for the operators, uh, we use uh, uh, um, surgical masks, gloves, and. Uh, uh, for uh, operators in the COVID units, uh, also a plastic, like, um, how can I say? Um, a face shield? A, a, excuse me? A face shield? Uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, a, a plastic mask, but uh, um, that covers uh, all the face. Uh, I don't right. know the English for, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, think, I, think, I think we know what you're saying, yes. Uh, okay, and uh, glasses. Right. And so have okay. physicists have been um, required to wear these equipments for patient consults or or have um, or, 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 or physicists no longer having direct patient consults? Mm, I'm sorry, I didn't listen to you very well. Can you repeat? Yeah, so so the, the question okay. is, is the, have um, when a physicist may often happen, have to uh, speak directly to uh, patients, and and so when physicists have to speak directly with patients, um, do they require personal the same level of personal protective equipment? Okay, usually the physicists uh, don't uh, speak with the patient to stay with the patient. Uh, uh, only in gamma knife uh, we see directly the patients, but uh, no, we don't use uh, any anything more than uh, a mask. Okay. Okay. Thanks. And so, have you had challenges or problems accessing uh, personal protective equipment for, and has that affected the way that you um, are able to work? No, 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 absolutely not. Okay, thanks. So here's another question uh, that was submitted by email. Um, and so obviously we did talk about, um, this seems to be a, a, a good part of your presentation about COVID plus patients being treated in your facility. You did yeah. mention some, some things about- Yes, yes, yes. 
uh, as I said before, yes, we uh, we treat uh, COVID uh, patients, uh, but yeah. they usually uh, they are the last treatment of the day. Right. And, and uh, then we treat, uh, we clean the, the treatment room uh, in a special way uh, with a deep, uh, uh, deep clean disinfection of the, the room. And then the the patient, the next patient uh, uh, is in the day after, in the morning. One of the uh, questions from our audience was about the mobilization devices. So for these uh, patients that are COVID positive, um, are there any changes in the way um, that you immobilize the patient? Do they have to use? Do they use all the same equipment, but they just have to go, all of that equipment has to go through a deep clean? Uh, yes, we use the same, uh, but we clean <laughs> for no, every patient. Right. Yeah. Okay, understood. Let's go to the next question. Um, so this has to do with just about work mm -hmm. culture. And so you touched on this in your presentation. Can you explain how things have changed in the work culture in your community with regards to how people speak with each other and and, and your leadership and 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 wow. have things become have things improved in terms of transparency and leadership? Can you make some comments on that? Uh, yes. Uh, now we try to to be separated. We absolutely respect uh, the distance between us and uh, people uh, who are physicists uh, who work in. Uh, um, radiotherapy department go directly on there and uh, the same in gamma knife um, without passing through the, um, the, 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 the the medical physics department uh, the rooms uh, the offices of medical physics department and the the communication uh, via mail <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, telephone yeah uh and what else uh, we don't uh, have any kind of uh, meetings uh, um the leadership uh, i i don't know because uh, now we uh, we just uh, decide how to divide the work uh, um how to to organize uh, our working uh, time uh, and uh, we we do it uh, uh, only via mail right yeah thank you um another question here is how have you and your colleagues handled the physical mental and psychological challenges mm. so you did touch on this a little bit just earlier Yes, it's terrible. It's terrible also because now our hospital is a COVID hospital. Uh, every day we have a lot, really a lot of uh, died people. Uh, you know, we have uh, new uh, two uh, ten structures uh, for uh, um, for. Uh, patients in very, very bad conditions. And uh, it's difficult, it's really, really difficult. Also because uh, Milano is, uh, uh, we don't know why, but uh, is, uh, I think uh, the city with uh, the largest number of uh, positive uh, um, patients in Italy mm -hmm. and I think except I think Spain and, and some cities in France maybe also in Europe right is is really difficult it's really yeah. really difficult we try to um, to stay quiet uh, to smile to be <laughs> positive but <laughs> But it's, 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 it's not so easy, yes. Yeah. yes well, yes. We, we really applaud for all the work and energy all of our healthcare teams have been providing during this uh, this, this this challenging time. Here's another question. Um, yeah. And this kind of touches on some of many questions that have been asked in our, in our, in our poll here right now. 
Um, mm -hmm. What radiation therapy specific processes have been forced to change? So you did mention about sort of the the um, the, the remote computing, uh, remote yeah. planning. Um, yeah. But have there have there been new things that have changed or have forced you to change uh, in your environment? So for example, you know some some centers still struggle with electronic charts, and has this forced people to to do this sort of uh, to to migrate through uh, to an electronic charting system and and, and, mm -hmm. and quality insurance processes. What kinds of things yeah. have, have changed significantly as a result of, of this pandemic? But, uh, first of all, the consultations, because right. uh, uh, we are used to organize once a week uh, um, a meeting for the different pathologies um, with the radiotherapists, surgeons, uh, and uh, ex people uh, uh, from different departments in the hospital uh, to speak about uh, the, the particular cases and so on and now we don't do it anymore. The quality assurance uh, we continue to do in radiotherapy department and also in radiosurgery, in gamma knife, cyber knife, of course, because we, we have a lot of patients and uh, the verification when we can we don't do any kind of activity uh, on the patients near the patients right okay right okay um let's go to another uh question um and this is a little bit more um there seems to be a lot of questions about radiation safety um with the questions that have been posed and you mentioned that you made some changes to your dissymmetry service. And um, so, so maybe make some general comments if you can about other radiation, how else uh, COVID has affected your radiation safety programs. <clears throat> you also mentioned uh, the fact that you're no longer using shields as well. Uh, yes, yes. Um, first of all, uh, we didn't do any kind of, uh, um, of check on the machine because usually we do uh, together at the same time um, the quality assurance for patient and for workers test on the on the machines in diagnostic departments and we are not doing it now yeah. and uh, <sighs> For uh, for the other activities, uh, mm, you know, uh, usually we check, uh, for example, uh, the lead apron. Right. Uh, we are not doing it now, uh, also because uh, uh, they are in uh, red <laughs> red uh, zones of the hospitals. Uh, Right. And uh, from uh, the legal point of view, also from the legal point of view, um, the documents that we have to produce uh, are less now because uh, the government knows uh, that I, I think I don't know if this is a problem only in Italy or also in other countries, but now there are. Uh, few mobile machines, uh, um, the, the industries uh, have a few mobile machines, but because all the hospitals want, right. want to have. Yeah. Okay, and so uh, if uh, an industry uh, tells us, uh, I have a mobile uh, machine for you, I don't need to, um, to send the government a lot of documents, a lot of paper before having the, the machine in the hospital, before buying the machine. Right. Uh, I don't so, know if, you, um, if my well, English just, <laughs> is well, not yeah, so good. I think, I think we get, I think we get your, your, uh, your, your, your point is, is that access to care has been made yes. a little bit more efficiently yes. as a consequence of, of, of all of this. Um, this work. Okay. So we have a few more minutes and, and there are just so many questions and I just really okay. want to thank all of the, the people that have been contributing their questions for, for us today. So 
and I really apologize not being able to get through many of them, but, but here's one uh, from, from someone, and that has regards with uh, brachytherapy. And so the question ah, okay. is, is okay. how are you doing uh, Okay, um, we don't have any brachytherapy device. Uh, we don't uh, do brachytherapy in our hospital, okay. only uh, prostate. Uh, brachytherapy with uh, um, uh, seeds uh, with iodine seeds. S right. Seeds, you, you, need, you say? Okay, um, in, in, you understand? Prostate and, and other um, sites, yes. LDR. LDR seeds, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, no, we don't have okay. any device for radiotherapy, for brachytherapy. Right. Okay, um, here's another uh, question. Um, so here's, here's, a, here's an interesting question. Uh, do you think the future of medical physics will change as a result of this pandemic? In the future, I don't yeah. know. Like how, do you think, how do you think practice is gonna change because of this, because of this pandemic? I'm thinking about it. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, maybe. Be, um we 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 can uh, organize the um, the working from home uh, i don't know in the other countries but in italy we use uh, to plan in inside the hospital but uh, it, it is uh, possible to stay at home to stay at home and i right. think that uh, it will be the future because it is uh, is not useful in my opinion to come from home to the hospital to sit down in the planning room and uh, in the evening to to take the car and go back home um, yeah. I think that we can organize uh, the remote planning in the future yeah um, we'll ask one more question from the audience, and that is, um, what's what's the strategy that you're going to have in place after um, this COVID pandemic has somewhat resolved? Um, you, you mentioned in your presentation that there's going to be a large surge in patients that are going to require treatments and, and, and have care. Mm. Do you, have you guys thought about how you're going to manage and, and be able to provide those patients? Um, the care in a timely way. I, I don't believe that it uh, is up on uh, the medical physicist, but yeah. on ra the, the radiation oncologist and the neurosurgeons, uh, because they have to decide when and where to treat the patients. Yeah, it, but it, it, there's going to be a lot of resources that I mean, are you anticipating a lot of resources that are going to be required, and and how how are you how do you think you're going to manage that? Mm, I, I I I don't have a an answer. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a tough it's a tough question. Um, I'm going to pause the questions for now, and and, and again, I, I apologize for all those that have submitted a lot of excellent questions, and we'll try to maybe. Can, capture uh, some of these questions for, for Antonella to answer maybe at some other time. Um, so I'm going to go to the last part of the presentation, which was just to basically ask you for some basic words of wisdom. Um, you know, what kind of, what kinds of things can you, can you share with um, the rest of your colleagues around the world? Um, if you could, if you could have, if you could do this process entirely over again, what were the things that you would, you would think you'd like to have changed? Um, in order to be better prepared for for this situation. Okay, uh, my take home message uh, is uh, pay attention, because at the really beginning we didn't understand, we didn't understand the situation. You can organize your work from home, you can take the distances. We were not prepared, absolutely, and uh, also it is possible. To to work uh, um, 
from home in the field of the research, for example. Now there are two uh, physicists, two researchers at home, and they are processing the, um, uh, the images uh, from uh, COVID uh, CT scans, uh, from uh, COVID patients' uh, CT scans. Um, and uh, in this moment, uh, pay attention. For the future, we can move, uh, I think, uh, mm, to other uh, modality uh, of reading uh, the, the images. I think right. that uh, the diagnostic uh, will be in the future the most different field in which we will work. Right. Okay, well, thank okay. you so much for this. And thank so, you. To you. Um, just, just a final uh, couple of words. Um, yeah. So I want to just formally thank Dr. Antonella Del Vecchio and also Dr. Claudio Fiorno to, yeah. for, for helping make this happen. Um, I also want to publicly um, thank the AAPM headquarters team, um, specifically Farhana Khan for able, uh, being, being able to help us put this all together. Um, this wouldn't be possible without with a lot of the work that she has put in uh, in facilitating the go-to webinar meeting. And so we're grateful for their support. We'd also like to thank our participants and uh, for attending. And we want to thank our healthcare workers around the world for, for sacrificing their time and energy and, and often dealing with uh, a lot of challenging situations uh, given this pandemic. Um, just a couple of other important notes that if you require more information with regards to medical physics practice or radiation oncology and diagnostic imaging practice, um, please refer to some of the professional guidelines um, that are available online, uh, such as the Astro Astro uh, guidelines, the APM as a, as a very nice um, website. And there's also some resources on the MPWB uh, website as well. Um, finally, I encourage you to, to share your thoughts on whether you feel this has been helpful. So there will be a, um, a very brief uh, questionnaire that you can uh, complete at the at the end of this uh, session. And so we're hopeful that um, that you can provide us with uh, some feedback um, on this. Um, once again, I just want to thank everyone for their time and energy that they've put in helping make this happen. I want to thank all of our audience for participating and uh, the organizers for for making this happen. Um, this concludes the webinar and. Um, Keep safe and uh, thank you for attending. Goodbye. Thank you.